things on which water fixers, plumbing, and filtration. And we are standing outside a building owned by the Seven Sisters Vacation Rentals. As you can see from the sign here, they're at 2540 Suite Number A, Skyway Drive here in San Jose, California. And we are filming this video because we want to show you the awesome job we just finished up for this company on installing a commercial washer and commercial dryer machine complex so they can take all their laundry from their different uh, rental properties and uh, timeshare and so forth and they can bring all the laundry here and do everything on the site and not have to pay somebody else or a different company to handle all their laundry for their laundry and drying. So we're going to walk inside the building. I'm going to give you a quick tour of what we just installed. My associate Brett Longfellow is with me here and he's the one that's building this. So if you enter into our uh, quarters, we'll kind of give you a quick guided tour here of what we've done and, and uh, how long it took and and you can see the intensity of this installation. Uh, we were hired by this company to do basically all phases of the installation. Everything from the plumbing infrastructure to the drain and sewer in infrastructure, uh, gas supply lines and uh, the venting for all the drain infrastructure and the venting for the dryers and the water heaters and um, the gas supply lines. And so anyway, oh, excuse me, I said that, electrical supply. So we did hire a subcontractor for the electrical. His name is Johnny Ramirez from the Better Builder Company. Just uh, throw in a little tag for him there. And uh, so anyway, we just want to show you real quick before we start the tour. This is an example in this room of the quantity, the mass volume of laundry uh, these uh, people are facing every single week. It's actually more than this on a weekly basis, but they've been taking this laundry out to laundry mats all over the uh, city of Santa Maria and up in Pismo Beach and Avila Beach to have the laundry done. I just wanted to show you this real quick. I know I'm talking fast, but I just want to cover everything without boring you to death, so I'm going to go quickly through this. So, um, we brought in gas line from outside at the gas meter, which I'll show you in just a minute. And we reconfigured an entire gas supply line, two inch, to come in to the water heaters and to the dryers. And we installed the uh, shutoff valves, the proper sediment uh, drip leg traps, they call them, for the gas lines to be code compliant. Um, we then uh, set up these two uh, basically residential water heaters, they're 50 gallon water heaters, working in a parallel or tandem manifold so they can uh, boil the water at the same time and when the demand for the washers comes on in the utility sink, they can go ahead and get hot water delivered at the same time so it kind of increases, it doubles up the capacity. Uh, as you can see here from our plumbing configuration, we had to fabricate all the water lines, hot and cold, coming from the water source, which we'll look at in just a minute. And those go all the way up to the rooftop of the building, all the way over and then brought all the way back down to where the main water supply line enters the building on the west side. And then as you can see, continuing on the plumbing configuration that Brett is filming, I'm going to walk over here and close this door. Uh, we had to set up all the hot and cold water supply lines for the washing machines and for the utility sink. And of course, as I just mentioned, for the uh, water heaters. Um, so back over to our water heaters and our dryers. We uh, staged all the dryers according to the manufacturer's specification and installation manuals. Uh, the water heaters are set up on stands and uh, they are code compliant based upon the earthquake strapping, the temperature and pressure relief valve overflow lines that we put in. We fabricated a special drain assembly so we could take the exhaust drains uh, if there's ever an overflow in the water heater pans we can take that water drain into these um, uh, traps that we built, these actually uh, combination wise off of two inch ABS piping that will then run outside uh, to the outlet of the building. So if there's ever an overflow off the pans, a leak occurs, whatever, they can drain off uh, effectively. And um, this is an old gas line that we had that was existing in the building that we had to also transition back into the main the master gas manifold 
And if you follow that up, which Brett will do, it goes basically to a warehouse heating system yeah, goes, that is up above. Up and and so that was existing before we arrived to this project. But anyway, that's where that gas line ties in. So we've created a shutoff valve for that as well. Um, I don't know if Brett walked behind the dryers to show you the electrical that was uh, staged in and then all of our transition drops from the gas supply into the dryers and then we've plugged everything in now and tested them. Uh, we did have to install this large venting system which the two stackable dryers take a 10 inch exhaust vent and then the single 75 pound dryer takes a, a 8 inch exhaust vent. Uh, this was a little bit of a, a adventure for us because we're not used to working with this large of uh, piping infrastructure, but it came out awesome as you can see from the, uh, the video and the pictures we've taken. It just came out beautiful. And we'll walk back over here now to the washing machines. These are three large commercial washing machines. These are 60 pound machines, so they can handle a whole lot of, of laundry loads and um, Anyway, just wanted to show you the inside of one of the tubs and so forth. These are what you'll find literally at all your commercial um, um, washer and dryer outlets here in, in the city or all cities where you pay for a service to a laundromat. These are set up in there. Um, this is a utility sink they wanted to uh, wash mops with, towels, hand towels, rags, whatever. So we had to set this up as well. Um, we had to create the drain assembly, as you can see. They did want a floor drain by plumbing code for the washers or the mop sink in case there was ever a flood, an overflow, so that could drain out to the outside of the building as well. Then we had to find a way, this was the probably one of the trickiest parts of the entire installation for us as a company. The owners of the property absolutely was adamant about not having any sewer line uh, penetrations outside the perimeter wall of the building on this west wall and they were really adamant about not having this uh, concrete cut to where the sewer lines would go in the concrete under the footer of the foundation as Brett just filmed here with the uh, floor drain and they didn't want the fa foundation itself compromised or penetrated so we had to spend several hours actually it was a, about three days of buying parts and putting them together to configure this drain assembly because as you can see from what Brett just filmed we only had 10 and a half inches height from the center drain to the actual floodplain or the floor level and as you can see from the P-traps that was quite a feat because the P-traps themselves when they're mounted uh, of the onto the back of the washers just about cuts you know they touch the floor themselves so Finding a way to elevate this and, and get the proper amount of fall for the sewer line so when the water drains out, it drains without backing up, like I said, was pretty tricky for us. We finally got it figured out. We got the proper fittings. We got it all installed and set up. Then you can see this elaborate venting system we had to put in to get proper airflow into the drain to allow the drains to, to flow and drain out properly. Uh, so they don't back up and overflow and create a, a back flood or an actual error message with the washing machines. We did put on water hammer arresters onto the plumbing line, the hot and cold water lines. These are like little shock absorbers just so you don't get a, when the faucets or the machines turn on and off, there's not a, a, a real impact, so to speak, of water pressure onto the PVC, the CPVC plumbing line to create any type of breakage or, or leakage or flaws. Um, and then we had to create or install a trap primer, they call it, a P-trap water primer. And uh, this is basically done again off of a pressure differential. Uh, every time that an appliance or a fixture turns on and off, there will be a little water spit into the, the P-trap of the floor drain so it keeps the, the vent and the trap nice and wet so you don't get odors coming back into the system and, and uh, creating a, 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 an imbalance of air and, and um, you know, foul odors inside the actual building itself. Uh, and then, I don't know if Brent filmed this or not, but we did install a water softener loop on our end of our uh, water line here for the coal water supply line. And that will give them the ability to install a, a large water softener for the laundry 
uh, you know, moving forward in the future if they so decide to, to choose to do that. And then we also included a not only a clean-out access for the main sewer lateral that goes outside the building, but also the ability we extended that out so that it could be cut in the future and a P-trap and, and an extended riser could be put on there for the drain assembly for the water softener as well. Um, and then as you can see on the, again, on the plumbing infrastructure, the hot and cold water lines, we did include a pressure gauge to monitor the water pressure to the building, a hose bib so they could, uh, you know, just get fresh water if they wanted to inside the building without having to go outside. And then we put uh, full port uh, one inch ball valves uh, for the hot and cold water supplies to the machines, so make it easy for servicing and, and in case there's ever an emergency, a leak or whatever. Um, let's go outside and I just want to show you the end of the project, which is our sewer line. And we had to install what's called a lip trap interceptor for the drain water for the washing machine. And Brett will follow us out here. This is the lip trap interceptor here. So what this does is this box or this trap is sized appropriately to the amount of drain water all three machines will, will ex uh, evacuate out of their cycle when they're done with the complete cycle and including the, uh, the uh, mop sink or the utility sink drain water as well. So it's sized for the flow rates in gallons per minute flow. And the you can see here where we did penetrate one penetration only for the sewer lateral drain, the master drain lateral, going into this uh, assembly, this, this lint trap. And then we created clean-out accesses for the lint trap, and we had a clean-out access down here at the very end where we tied into the master sewer drain. And so this will, this will give three accesses outside, one access inside to either run a hydro jetter or sewer cable machines to be able to clear these lines. And as you can see, this was all open trench. We have another video that we'll incorporate that shows the open trench and all the plumbing and the sewer drain plumbing infrastructure for this part of the project. And then this is our brand new installation of an inch and a half uh, copper water supply line to the inside of the building. As you can see, we put on a brand new shutoff valve, master shutoff to all the inside water of the building and a pressure regulator valve to reduce the working pressure inside the building for plumbing co compliancy and a brand new hose bin on the outside as well. This was dug out all and tied into an inch and a half PVC cold water municipal water supply line. So that is pretty much the end of our installation and our project. And we want to thank each and every one of you for uh, viewing our video. Let's go back inside real quick. thank this customer uh, for allowing us this, the opportunity to serve them on this project. This was a fantastic project for us. Going to be one of our flagship installations by far because we've uh, essentially done everything on the job except for the electrical wiring installation part. But uh, we thank them a whole lot. Seven Sisters Vacation Rentals uh, and uh, just all you customers out there, thank you for the years of service you've allowed us to attend uh, to your issues and emergencies. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach us at www.waterfixers.com or you can call us at 805-928-6444 or you can email us at information at waterfixers.com. Thank you for attending. You all have a blessed day.